Hi and hello, welcome to online biology class because of IDL Authors Educational Institution and the OR. I am Sadish Kumar going to take down the class regarding the topic of organization of tissues. This is unit number 18 for 9th standard biological science. So today's topic uh, we will see that uh, organization of tissues. So organization that means uh, we can see about the variety of tissues are available. A tissues which is made up of with cells. The cells are the structural and functional unit of living organism which is uh, equal to both plants and animals. So today we are seeing about uh, what is tissue, how the tissues are classified, then we will see some kind of basic tissue system of the plants from organization of tissues. Then the learning object after completing lessons, uh, you are going to be able to understand what are the things. Number one, know the different types of tissues and their morphology. So we know then from sixth standard itself, we are studying about a plant cell and animal cell. The morphological difference we know very well. So they are having a cell wall. Then uh, animal cell, they does not having a cell wall. Then they are having some kind of uh, intercellular organal variation which is beguined from differences in plant cell and animal cell. And uh, from here we are seeing about uh, the plant cell, parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, arenchyma. Then these are the things are seen. And uh, what are the structure, rod shape, round shape and irregular shape, oval shape, these are the things are seen about the morphological things. And uh, identify how tissues are organized in the specific patterns and organ. Then, all the tissues are not present in the, all the parts of the body. Then each and every type of body they are consist of some kind of a special type of tissue and a special type of tissue which is carried by a specific type of function. And next one to understand how the tissues perform the life and activities of plants and animals. We know that the plants also made up of cell and tissues and animal also made up of with cell and tissues. Gain, then the, gain the knowledge about the structural organization of tissues and get uh, familiarized with the process and types of significance of cell division. We know that uh, the cell division, we are accept that the cell division, the uh, amitosis, mitosis and meiosis, three different types of cell division behind that. How the cell division, they are done some kind of specific function in the body or understand from this topic. Then let us enter into the introduction of the topic, the unicellular organism and the multicellular organism. You know, from sixth standard itself we are studying, what is unicellular? The organism which is made up of with only one cell. Multicellular, the organism which is made up of with more than two type of cell is called multicellular. Then uh, we are simply say, what is the example of unicellular organism? We are all saying that bacteria and uh, amoeba. So, the bacteria and the amoeba, they are in the unicellular organism and the protozoa are also the unicellular organism. The organism which is made up of with a single cell or one cell, this is called a unicellular organism. On the other hand, the single, then opposite, what is that? A multi, the other hand, multicellular organism like higher plants and animals are composed of millions of different types of cell that are grouped into different level of organization. Some of them in the epithelial cell, some of them in the ground cell, some of them in the vascular cell, some of them in the epidermal cell, like that. They are done some kind of organization and based on the organization, they are having some kind of a basic function. And we will see this diagram, what is unicellular organism and multicellular organism. From the unicellular organism, we are seen about the paramecium, amoeba, bacteria and yeast. From multicellular organism, we know best example, plant and animals. They are called a multicellular organism. The human beings, they are having a body cell, heart and the entire thing, they are made up of with millions of cells. Just you can understand, our head also made up of with thousands of cells. Likewise, the organism which is made up of with millions of cells is called multicellular organism. And the multicellular organism, they are having a specialized level of organization. The cell, a group of cell is called a tissue, a group of tissue is called an organ, a group of organ is called an organ system, a group of organ system is called an organism. So we are visited a mutton stall and a chicken stall. We see that a chicken or mutton, 
So at the time of beginning they are in the life. We can take down the leg piece. It is an organ. We have seen that a chicken or mutton, goat. So it is an organism. Then we can pick up only the leg piece. It is an organ, uh, organ system. And uh, the leg piece is divided into small, small part. So they are having a forelimp and bottom. All these things are separated. It's called an... So it's called, uh, it's called an another system. So they are called an organ. Then... The organs are made up of with the small, small pieces. So that is called an tissue and the tissue we are chewing at the time of after cooking. This little bit of piece which is embedded with our teeth is called cells. So this is the level of organization of multicellular organism. And a group of cells is positioned and designed to perform a particular function is called tissue. An organ structure is made up of with a collection of tissue that carry out with a specialized function. A group of cell is called tissue. So a group of tissue is called organ which is done with a specialized function. So for example, we are seeing that heart, it is an organ. The organ which was done with only a pumping process, it cannot be done a digestion, it cannot be done a excretion, it cannot be done a respiration. But it was done only with the pumping. So that is called a specific function. Next one, for example, in the plants, the roots is stem, leaf are the organ, whereas the xylem and ploem are the tissues. The xylem and ploem, we cannot be seen in our normal life. Just we can make the cross section of stem and leaves. Then only we are going to be seen about the tissue. So that is called a tissue. And the number of cells are joined together. They are become in the form of organ. And similarly in the animals, stomach, for example, an organ consists of a tissue made up of epithelial, gland cells and muscle cells. We are seeing that the stomach, we can cut open the stomach inside of these uh, numerous uh, rough particles, is called uh, epithelial cell and they are secreted some of the juices by means of gland cell and the muscles are present in the animal stomach. And in this chapter, you will be learn about different types of plant and animal tissue, how they are modified, coordinate the life activities. We are seen about the various types of tissues and cells, how they are coordinate and how they are done. Their functions are seen about today's topic. And first one, we are seen about plants. What is plant tissue? The tissue which is present on the plant is called plant tissue, symbol. So what is plant tissue? The tissue which is present on the plant is called a plant tissue. Yeah, plants are made up of vegetative reproductive tissue, vegetative and reproductive tissue. Vegetative, which means we can, the vegetative part, we can see the drumstick. We can cut the small branch and penetrate with the soil. New plant, it will be emerged. It's called a vegetative. Reproductive, which means by means of flower, it was produced with their own generation. It's called a reproductive tissue. In general, a plant tissue is classified into two types. One is called a meristematic tissue or meristems. Second one is called a permanent. So meristem, they are going to be grown. Permanent, they are stable. Simple concept. Meristem, which is going to be grown. And permanent, which is in the form of stable. So two type of tissue system. One is called a meristematic tissue system. Another one is called a permanent tissue system. Then, we will see that uh, diagrammatic representation of meristem and a permanent tissue. The next one, what is meristematic tissue? Two more questions. The term meristem is derived from the Greek word meristosis, which means dividable or having a cell division. Only a tip can be grown, but bark cannot be grown, stem cannot be grown. Only the tip of the plant only grown. So it is called a means of divisible or having a cell division. Cell division means yeah, one cell is divided into two. Two become four. Four become eight. Eight become sixteen. So the plant was growing. And the meristematic tissue is grouped to immature cell capable for undergoing cell division. It is an immature cell. Young one. So it is going to be mature. The plant meristem zone found in the zone where is a growth take place. From the meristem zone only, the plant growth it will be takes place, which is available on the tip of the plant. We see that example, apex of stem, root, 
leaf and primudia vascular cambium car cambium these are the examples of meristem and meristems are three types apical meristem intercalary meristem and lateral meristem so apical meristem which is located on the tip of the stem and intercalary in between these two lateral which is available in the bottom of the cell is called intercalary meristem and the characteristic features they are in the form of living cells important question the meristems are the living cells the cells are small oval polygonal or round in shape the cells are small oval polygonal or round in shape they are thin walled with a dense cytoplasm you know that the cell consists of a semi solid substance the substance name is called cytoplasm large nuclei and the small vacuoles are present large nuclei and the small vacuoles are present in this meristematic tissue they undergo for mitotic cell division they do not store food material so it is a growing part so they are utilizing the food material but they cannot be done in the storing mechanism and next one the types of meristem based on the position so based on the position the meristems are classified into three types apical meristem intercalary meristem and lateral meristem on the basis the meristems are three types apical intercalary and lateral meristem so what is apical meristem so they are found in the apex or growing point tip of root and stem is bring about increase the length or height of the plant is called an apical meristem intercalary meristem it lies between the region of permanent and primary tissue permanent is a bottom so primary is going to be grow in between these two region is called intercalary meristem it found in the either base of the leaf example for pinus at the base of internode example in the grasses and lateral meristem these are ranged from the parallel and the causes a thickness of the plant part they are always in the form of parallel and the thickness grip of the plant grip of the plant is called an lateral meristem what are the functions of this meristems the meristems are actively dividing tissue of plants that are responsible for primary primary means elongation so the small plant become a huge tree is called elongation secondary thickening so initial stage it is very slim then after that it is become a huge tree and the girth of the plant uh, these are the two main functions are available for the meristem so thank you very much from next class we are seen about the permanent tissue then what are the types of permanent tissue simple tissue and the complex tissue these are the things are seen about next class thank you very much i am sadish kumar from biological science department